Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I wanted to talk a little bit about the new kind of scare craze that is going on um, because, you know, I know it's going on because I've had several comments, um, questions asked in the comment section about this and that is regarding copper and its commercial cat, uh, com commercial cat and dog food causing copper toxicity or liver disease in dogs and cats. Um, I do truly think this is another scare tactic um, it is another way for companies to um, try to differentiate themselves uh, you know, from it saying we do testing or we do, I, I'm not really sure um, where the scare is coming from um, or who started it or what the purpose of it was or maybe somewhere down the road it all really did have an issue. Um, but I want to clarify some things and give you guys some information to try to give you knowledge so that you are not scared by some of these things and go in it with a realistic understanding of the situation. Um, and so um, for those of you that are new, welcome. My name is Dr. A. I'm a small animal general practitioner. I've been practicing um, for 15 years and so I've seen a lot of patients. I probably see 2,000 plus patients a year for the last 15 years. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of patients. Um, in the time period that I have been practicing, I have diagnosed one patient with copper toxicity. Not copper storage disease, that is another another completely different disorder. And so I think people are getting confused with that. Copper, copper storage disease is a genetic condition where the body cannot process copper. You cannot get that from pet food, okay? That is something that pets are born with and there are certain breeds that are predisposed to that um, and it is diagnosed a specific way. It is not something that you get from pet food. It is not copper toxicity. Um, copper toxicity is overdosing on copper, usually from a supplement or something like that. The one case that I had with copper um, disease was um, something we detected elevations in liver enzymes on blood work. We went through the workup and we did a bunch of testing and all that testing was normal as far as liver function went. And so as we were going through the differential and working through um, what could be causing this, we found that that particular pet was getting into livestock feed that was fortified with copper. We simply removed that access to that feed and everything went back to normal, okay? And so the important things to note with that are that yes, copper can cause elevations in liver disease, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more common issues that will cause it than copper toxicosis. And so one of the comments I had um, on my, you, you know, on the comment section was, um, my dog had liver enzymes and it was because of the food. Um, it could have been, I don't know this person's particular case, but just because your pet has elevated liver enzymes does not mean it is from copper. Copper would be at the very, very, very bottom of my differential and actually wouldn't even honestly be on my differential until I started crossing things off the top and I had to repopulate the bottom. That's how unlikely it is. Um, so I wanna just throw that out there first before we get into what copper is, what the recommendations are, what the maximums are, because I've actually seen some numbers too that make absolutely no sense and I don't know where they're coming from. So I'm going to refer you to Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. I will do a screen capture here, but you can always um, click on the link in my description box um, and it will have a full text, um, free link that you guys can follow. You can always purchase a hard copy book if you want. I don't know why you would, um, but I believe that's on my Amazon storefront if you wanna get one, but I like the free version because you can search it. As you see here on the top, I searched copper and it brought me um, right to where I wanted to be. For those of you that are following along, um, it is page 119 in the vitamins and minerals section. So copper is required for life. You have to have copper. Um, and so pet food companies, um, do have to fi you know, follow a minimum requirement for that because deficiency can be an issue. Um, and so um, the important thing to note is, especially a lot of these people are calling companies and asking for, for copper values and things like that, copper comes in very many forms and we're not gonna be getting into the organic chemistry and the chemistry in general on copper because I think that is way above what the reasonable person is expected to know. Yes, as a veterinarian, I know it. And yes, some of you out there that are chemists and biochemists and things like that may understand this, but we're not going into that 
detail here. Um, it is in detail in the textbook if you want to do that, but it comes in various forms. Some are bioavailable, some are not. And so when you ask for total copper um, from a company, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all bioavailable. You know, some of that copper may simply be defecated out. And so that's number one. You, you, you don't know what you're getting um, simply by that number. Um, but if you want the numbers and you want to know what the numbers are, um, here you have it. So um, the minimum requirements for extruded cat food is 15 milligrams per kilogram dry matter. Moist is 5 milligrams per kilogram um, during the growth and reproductive phase. Um, the maintenance of adult cats is the 5 milligrams per kilogram dry matter regardless of the form. So there it is right there for cats. Um, for dogs... Um, the AFCO recommended um, range or the you know minimum recommended range for dogs is 7.3 milligrams per kilogram dry matter basis. So um, if you don't know how to do that, milligrams per kilogram, you have to figure out the kilograms of your pet. Um, the kilograms is the weight in pounds divided by 2.2 and then you multiply it by 7.3 if you're a dog and you multiply it by five if you are a cat and that will give you the minimum requirements but that's not what we're worried about everybody's worried about the maximum so where is the maximum requirements so for that you have to scroll pretty far down to right here this paragraph right here um, copper excess in dogs and cats with normal metabolism, so ones that are not diagnosed with that copper storage disease, which is a genetic disease, it is not something you get from the food, um, is of much less practical concern than copper deficiency. Um, but it can interfere with other uh, um, minerals such as iron and zinc, and that's an important thing to notice um, in these things as well. So just because you're looking at absolute values, these things are interacting, some are bioavailable, some are not. If you give some of this, it can interfere with this and it changes, and so that's why some of these things are well beyond, well beyond what the average lay person, even myself in some of these cases, would be meant to um, understand. And so using um, a board certified nutritionist, um, using one of these programs that helps um, determine these things is really important because it really is honestly a lot more than the average person needs to worry about. And I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to obsess over it because there are certainly some things that it's just going to be impossible to really understand at that level because yes, just because you have this much copper, how much of it is bioavailable, how much of it is being interfered with by zinc, how much is being interfered with iron and how are those interactions actually changing what your pet is absorbing. And so um, they are talking about here the Bedlington West Highland Terrier, um, Sky Terriers, those are the ones that are predisposed to the autosomal recessive disease um, that is the copper hepatoxicosis. Um, and there are treatments available for that, um, you know, if your pet is diagnosed with that. That's the other thing. All these pets are dying from copper. They're dying from copper. Um, there is a specific way you diagnose copper toxicosis is with a liver biopsy. And so my question to a lot of these people are saying, oh, the pets are getting copper, you know, copper disease. Um, you know, they're dying of copper disease. Do they do liver biopsies on all those? Because I can't hardly ever get anybody to do a liver biopsy so I want to see all these liver biopsies that are floating around or what is most likely happening is they're getting high liver enzymes and there might be a vet out there that says yeah sure it's a copper change of food or people are doing their research and just saying that's what it is when it's not truly the diagnosis that would be my that would be my uh, my understanding and that's kind of what I relate to people um, if these animals are dying of toxic or co toxic um copper levels there are tests for that um, and that would be reported back to a pet food manufacturing company and then you know we would know and those things would be adjusted um, it is not something that we don't know how to diagnose it's hard or hard to diagnose we absolutely know how to diagnose that and there should be a paper saying um, you know that that is what your pet was diagnosed with and tests should have been done that are specific for that disease um, but anyway, as we get down here, um, we can see that ACO in 2007 set a safe upper limit of 250 milligrams per kilogram dry matter copper for dogs, and there is no um, safe upper limit for cats. So you can't even, I guess, feasi feasibly overdose a cat according to according to this. And so, um, you know, that keep that in mind. 250 milligrams per kilogram. So that means, again, you have to take your dog's weight divided by 2.2. So if you have a 50-pound um, dog, 
that's 22 kilograms, and they can have 250 milligrams per kilogram dry matter, your dog can have 5,681 milligrams of copper, okay? And some of these numbers were like, that food has 21. That's not even close, guys, it's not even close. And so be careful um, with these scare tactics, and you know, I'm happy to um, entertain them and do videos like this to try to put your mind at ease. Um, but again, 15 years of general practice, I have diagnosed one case of this. I've never diagnosed a copper, copper storage disease um, case. Never even seen that, other than actually my sister-in-law's dog has that, but I didn't diagnose it. Um, and he's doing fine on a special diet and you know, all is well there. So um, don't let these scare tactics um, really get to you. And um, if you have a question, always ask your veterinarian or seek to help of a board certified um, veterinary nutritionist, or I'm happy to answer questions as I am able on this channel. So I hope you enjoyed, like, and subscribe. Before you go, check out my website. Um, I might do an associated blog on this. I try to do a blog every Sunday. And um, we can hang out there as well as here. So hit the subscribe button before you go. And I will hang out with you guys next time. Bye.